Hello and welcome to Making Maven. Um, hey. Um, so we're going to be recovering a bike seat today. This is my daughter's. I'm doing it as her gift kind of thing. I grabbed some fabric from Walmart and it's water resistant. And then we have a stapler at home. You're going to want the smaller staples, not the long ones. You're going to need a hammer, a screwdriver, something flat to hit with. Your sewing machine and pins, heavy duty scissors um, to cut the fabric out. It'll be fun. You just need specific tools. I'm going to do another one later on about how to recover without a sewing machine. So look forward to that. Alright, so I got this bike seat and I'm reupholstering it for my daughter. So I want it to look kind of cool and like those old, nicer ones, except cheap and easy for me to do. Not easy for everybody, but I have all these supplies except the fabric, which I got for $3 at Walmart, so it wasn't that expensive. Um, I do recommend smaller staples than I ended up using, but they were still enough to where they didn't poke out. You're going to want to trace this. I suggest using a marker. I used a pencil. It's not the best, but it worked. So I mean it worked. When you go to cut out, make sure you go over the amount that you think you'll need because you don't want to go back and then have to add on or go buy new fabric because you don't have enough. I um, made this about an inch bigger. You only need about a quarter inch of seam allowance so that gave me a lot of wiggle room to uh, then trim it afterwards because I didn't use a template and also I was able to uh, pinch down onto the seat which was helpful. I'm uh, just testing how it looks on top. You can trim it from here. See, it's a little big, but it works. And then what you're gonna want is the sides. The sides are gonna go around without having any curves because I'm not fancy and that's okay. Allow about an inch of overlap and that'll allow for you to have a nice strong seam at the back of the bike. So with that cut that you just made at the back, you're going to fold the fabric so that you could get a straight cut. Um, mind you, you don't have to be super accurate because we are stapling this underneath the bike seat. Um, you're going to want enough so that when you go to staple you have a good bit to hold on to while you're holding it down. Um, so like an inch, two inches would not be bad. Um, you don't ever know how it's going to fit. So um, having that extra is not a bad thing. And I'm just going down, slicing it. It's not real technical, but uh, just, just leave that extra so that you have that room to staple without it pulling off. You're going to want to test this out on the bike seat um, just for size reference. Uh, you can pin them together. It's not necessary because the pieces you can pin down once you sew them together. Um, if it's too big though you'll be able to tell just by wrapping it around and kind of eyeing it. So you're going to go around once with your straight stitch in a bigger length, then you're going to test it out on your bike seat. This first one's a little bit tricky because of the shape of the bike seat. It, it needs a lot of maneuvering, but if you're patient and you're slow and you take your time around the edges, it's not hard. You just need that time to go at the machine's pace, basically. You're going to have to put your needle down and then um, walk it around a little too. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. When you go around, you're going to uh, not do the back until you end up at the back. You're going to sew around the outside, leaving 
a about inch from the back seam or where you want it to lay and then at the end when you get all the way back around and you have that nice gapping piece you're gonna sew your seam and then sew flat along the top edge and that way it will have the proper spacing you don't have to guess that you could do it in another way where you just do it the seam and then sew it on however with this bike seat you don't know the size so I, I like doing it this way because then I could pin it on the bike seat at the very end once most of the seam was already on and then you're gonna want to double stitch before you do the rest of that top seam because that way you uh, get the secure uh, locking bit of the zigzag stitch and it's all nice and won't break open and then you can do your zigzag stitch around the top edge as well I do not get footage of that unfortunately because I am working with some cameras I'm not used to and that's okay I also overlocked the top seam so it stayed flat from here you're going to want to pin the bike seat on. This has some tweaking but from this part you're going to actually be stapling on. I have this little thing that I have to take off that uh, makes the bike seat look kind of professional. So I took the screwdriver and I took all these pieces off. It helped with the stapling, it helped with um, getting the tight fit that I wanted, and um, it's pretty simple, the screwdrivers, there was one bolt, so nothing too fancy. And then you're going to just take it and start stapling. Um, I suggest pulling really, really tight. There is some um, spots where I had to take and hammer on top of the to do it but afterwards I just ended up afterwards I just ended up uh, putting everything back on after trimming it up you're gonna want to have extra space so that when you pull and sit and scooch the staples don't just rip out of the fabric so give yourself that extra little room and then put everything back and it'll look great or it'll look better than it was at least. I think it turned out pretty fantastic looking. Um, my daughter does too. It looks pretty professional. There are a couple of wrinkles around the corners but because of the type of stapler I'm using and um, the type of fabric I'm not displeased with this. This is actually the best outcome I could have asked for. <laughs> Um, let me know if you guys do this, if you like it, what you think, and yeah.